in this video i will tell you every single detail about this laparoscopic varus needle how does it work what should be the quadromanometric measurements on the insufflator on varus needle mode and what are its other uses uh, in addition to the pneumoperitoneum and believe me those are very interesting and amazing uses before going to the detail of everything kindly like and subscribe my youtube channel for more upcoming interesting videos about the surgeries and other laparoscopic tools and machines thank you hello everyone i am dr tayyab today i will be discussing about this very small tool but very useful tool that is the laparoscopic varus needle Varis needle was invented in 1932 by a Hungarian internist uh, whose name was Janus Varis. He used to treat uh, with Varis needle the tuberculous patients by creating the pneumothoraces, and that way he used to treat the uh, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. In 1938, the Varis needle became popular, and uh, general surgeons and gynecologists they started using it. for the purpose of pneumoperitoneum now i will uh, show you in close up the different parts of varus needle how the different parts of this needle work and uh, i will also tell you the logics behind the working of this varus needle varus needle comes in three lengths and those are 8 cm that is for pediatric patients and uh, then there is the 12 cm that is for adults having normal physique and the 18 cm that is for obese patients and the patients who are undergoing bariatric surgery but the diameter of all these three lengths is the same and that is 2 mm varus needle has two main components one is the outer needle and one is the inner stillet and we can bring out the stillet with the help of this anti clockwise rotatory movement and uh, here it is completely out this is the stillet and this is the outer needle it has a sharp tapered end for the uh, sharp entry into the resistant structures of the abdominal wall like rectus and the peritoneum and it is hollow inside this is everything the uh, stillet it has a side eye as it is visible at the uh, near the tip the tip is blunt why the eye is at one side it is to prevent any accidental insufflation of the intra abdominal organs or structures that come in direct contact to the tip of the varus needle especially omentum so the eye at one side is part of the safety mechanism of this needle there is a valve at the upper end of the varus needle and this valve is to control the flow of carbon dioxide through this needle and there is a small screw on opposite side to tighten this valve when this valve is parallel to the shaft of this needle the channel is open and when it is at right angle to the shaft of the needle the channel is closed there won't be any flow of the carbon dioxide and if you can see through the needle moving the valve opens and closes the channel there is another safety component of this needle and that is this spring mechanism it prevents the accidental or inadvertent injury of the intra abdominal structures or organs when the needle passes across the peritoneum and for this spring mechanism to work it is necessary to hold the needle but not the stillet like if you hold it here then this spring mechanism will work and it will be lifted up like this
suppose my thumb is acting like a resistance structure and when needle comes across such resistance structure the inner stillet gets uplifted and when the resistance structure is crossed like the rectus sheet and the peritoneum this uh, spring comes back to its normal position and this spring mechanism is another way to know that after insertion where your varus needle is lying for example when you insert the varus needle and this stillet is uplifted it means you are against some resistance structure like rectus sheath or the peritoneum but when this spring gets released it means you have crossed that resistance structure and now you are lying whether in the preperitoneal space or in the peritoneal cavity and there is another way to know that whether you are in the preperitoneal space or in the peritoneal cavity there are some tests and those are the irrigation suction hanging drop test and the plunger test and i will demonstrate these tests in the coming clips varus needle should always be held like a dart and it should be gripped from the outer needle part but not from the stillet because if you hold it uh, at the upper end from the stillet then the safety mechanism will not work holding like a dart have many benefits one is that there is automatically the 45 degrees angle and this angle is very important to prevent any injury to the intra abdominal structures like gut and more importantly the aorta and the vena cava so the entry should not be in the vertical direction to either the skin or the patient it should be avoided and the direction should always be towards the anus that is 45 degrees here in this picture you see if you insert your needle towards the patient's anus for example at 45 degrees then the needle will follow the natural hollow sacral curve and you will be lying below the aortoiliac axis now i am going to demonstrate you on this model that how to insert the varus needle suppose this is the skin and this is the abdominal wall and this is peritoneum and this is the thickness of the abdominal wall now before uh, inserting the needle you should know the distance from the tip of the needle that how much distance you should hold the needle from the tip for that uh, you should measure the anterior abdominal wall fold thickness midway from the anterior superior iliac spine and uh, the umbilicus and grip this fold the distance should be thickness of the abdominal wall fold plus 4 cm why adding the 4 cm i will tell you later on and uh, after that after the measuring this distance from the tip of the needle you should hold it like a dart to make the 45 degrees angle why that i previously told so that it should not enter vertically and uh, after that you should grasp the whole anterior abdominal wall thickness not only the skin to make the 90 degrees angle with the anterior abdominal wall why this 90 degrees angle to the anterior abdominal wall because if you enter at 45 degrees you will get lost into the preperitoneal space because you are going oblique and uh, the thickness of the abdominal wall that is less in the vertical direction will become more while going oblique and holding only skin will only add to the vertical distance from the skin to the peritoneum and will also make your entry more difficult and why adding 4 cm after you insert the needle and when it reaches the peritoneum you see there is tenting this tenting of the peritoneum is 4 cm that's why we added 4 cm in the original thickness of the abdominal wall if we don't add this 4 cm then needle will not pierce the peritoneum and enter the abdominal wall now after pushing it punctures the peritoneum and enters the intra abdominal cavity while entering the varus needle we come across 
two resistance structures one is the rectus sheath and other one is the peritoneum and there are two click sounds when we pass across these resistance structures and also the safety stillet gets uplifted two times so this is one way to know that we are in the peritoneal cavity but still if you are in doubt then these four tests can be performed to confirm intraperitoneal presence after passing the varus needle the first test to be performed is the irrigation and why irrigation uh, while going through the abdominal wall if any tissue or part of the fat is stuck in the side eye it will get washed out with the help of the irrigation now suppose we are going to insert our needle into the abdominal wall knowing all the principles of entry that i have already told and after slight force you just heard one click sound and also observed first uplifting then release of the safety spring of the stillet it means we have crossed the rectus sheath but still we are in the preperitoneal space now i will perform the confirmation test after tightening the syringe i will inject the saline through the varus needle it will get easily injected whether you are in the preperitoneal space or in the intraperitoneal cavity but if you pull back the plunger if the same saline is coming back then it means you are in the pre peritoneal space because it is a potential space fluid will not get away from this space it will come back into this syringe and now the hanging drop test just put two to three drops over the opening of the stillet and if the drop is hanging like this over the opening it means you are in a blind space like in the pre peritoneal cavity in our current scenario now another scenario where after first click sound we again experience some resistance and observe the uplifting of the stillet and then immediately we hear another click sound and then release of the safety spring it means we have crossed the peritoneum but to confirm we will again uh, do all these three tests first attaching the saline filled syringe and doing the irrigation as i already told that it will get easily irrigated but when you pull back the plunger there will be no saline coming back as you see it is only air but in reality there will be negative suction due to the negative intra abdominal pressure and now performing the hanging drop test when you put two to three drops over the opening of the stillet they will get sucked in due to the negative intra abdominal pressure there will not be any drop hanging over the opening of the stillet in plunger test if you remove the plunger and put saline in the empty syringe it will get sucked in into the peritoneal cavity under the effect of gravity for live demonstration of all these steps on patient kindly visit my youtube video link that is given in the description now talking about the quadrammetric indicators on insufflator uh, these indicators are preset pressure actual pressure flow rate and total amount of gas that entered in the abdominal cavity this is the preset pressure in above row and this is the preset flow rate and on right side this is the actual pressure and below is the actual flow rate preset is our desired command that we give to the insufflator and it varies from patient to patient and uh, actual is the real scenario that is what actually happening in the abdominal cavity these quadrammetric indicators are very important they tell you everything that what is happening where the gas is going where something is wrong i will upload a different video describing all these indicators in detail in different scenarios for now i will tell you that what should be these indicators on various needle mode this is a patient where i am insufflating the carbon dioxide and if we look at these indicators i have set the preset pressure at 10 mm of mercury and it should be always kept at 10 in patients 12 years of age and onwards and after the various job is over on cannula insufflation it can be increased up to 15 mm of mercury but up to 8 mm of mercury in uh, pediatric patients and for diagnostic laparoscopy and 18 for bariatric procedure and uh, i have set the preset flow rate at 2 liters per minute it uh, varies age to age and there is a formula that is 0.1 liter per minute per year so at 10 years 
it is around 1 liters per minute and it should not be more than 2.5 liters per minute on various needle mode because the maximum capacity of side eye of the various needle is 2.5 liters and also if you keep it above the 2 liters per minute and the tip of your various needle is accidentally lying in a vital structure like the vena cava or gut then there will be either air embolism or gut dilatation and while you are on cannula mode after the various needle only then you can increase the flow rate up to 10 liters per minute 10 to 15 liters per minute but not more than that there are some scenarios where you need to increase the flow rate up to 40 liters per minute that I will tell you separately in this patient 7 millimeter of mercury pressure has been achieved and the flow rate is 2 I am tapping the abdomen for resonance to check the insufflation and uh, after some time the actual pressure has been reached to my desired pressure if you look at these indicators actual pressure is equal to the preset pressure and the total amount of gas is 2.1 liter on various needle the total amount of gas should be between 2.5 to 6 liters per minute and it depends upon the age physique and build of the patient if patient is older having lax abdomen and is fatty then you will need more amount of gas to achieve your preset pressure but in my scenario the patient is thin built and young i have achieved my preset pressure at total 2.1 liters of the gas and when you have achieved your preset pressure you should remove the various needle and insert the cannula all of us are familiar with the first use of the various needle that is the pneumoperitoneum. if you don't have a laparoscopic suction needle in your tools then it can be used as a white board suction needle for any huge intra-abdominal cyst having specially thick contents and can also be used uh, for the suction of thick contents of inflamed gallbladder now i will discuss in detail the last two uses uh, one by one there are many instruments available in the market for closure of port site defect but today i will tell you how you can do it with this various needle that is already available in your tools as you are seeing in this video the only action needed is to pull and release the stillet of the needle with one hand and meanwhile you can feed the end of the thread in this side eye of the needle and release it respectively with the help of the other hand and you notice it is tightly gripped after that you insert the needle through same 10 millimeter defect and puncture the peritoneum about 1.5 to 2 centimeter from the margin of the defect inside and then release the stillet and remove the various needle and insert it again through the same 10 millimeter defect on the opposite side again at the same distance and with the help of left hand instrument feed the end of the thread to the side eye of the various needle this is very fine movement and it needs rehearsal after that pull the stillet and bring out the end of the thread and make the extra corporeal knot and this knot will be buried in that 10 millimeter incision and that will be closed afterwards I have invented this loop passer to perform various assisted to port appendectomy. You see there is a groove at one end to accommodate the thread loop. I have used this uh, hand quilting needle that is having an eye at one end of the length of 6.5 cm and shaved off the half length of this eye to make a groove and then joined these two needles with each other. To make this full length uh, low passer of 13 cm that will be accommodated in 12 cm various needle. To perform this procedure first uh, remove the inner stillet part of this various needle and only the outer needle part will be used. Then take a full length thread and make a loop at the center and feed that loop to the groove of this loop passer and after that uh, grab 
the both ends of the uh, thread with right hand and insert this loop passer at the upper end of the needle and it will come out at low sharp end after that uh, with the help of some grasper intraperitoneally grasp the loop and remove the loop passer out and then you can feed the tip of the appendix through this loop and perform your maneuvers now i will demonstrate all these steps on a dummy to make your concepts clear but for live demonstration of this procedure there is a video link in the description kindly visit that link this is 10 mm optical trocar in inferior umbilical crease this is 5 mm trocar in the suprapubic region and here i am going to insert the various needle at a point in right iliac fossa where the maximum handling of the appendix can be performed after the passing the varus needle i am removing the inner stillet part of the varus needle out and then as i previously showed you take a loop and feed it to the groove end of this uh, loop passer and grab it with some artery forceps for easy handling then insert this loop passer into the varus needle until the sufficient loop has reached inside the peritoneal cavity out of the lower end of the needle then remove the loop passer out or you can grasp the loop with some grasper and then remove it after that feed some extra length of the loop inside the peritoneal cavity and then with the help of the grasper you can further pull that loop inside as desired and then going through that loop hold the tip of the appendix with the grasper and slide that loop over the tip of the appendix with the help of the varus needle and the grasper then tighten the loop by pulling it outside now check out the freedom of the movement of this varus needle you can manipulate the tip of the appendix in any direction easily and can work on the meso appendix for dissection either with the help of ligature or can tie it with the extra corporeal knot and if the appendix is long you can also loosen this loop and hold the appendix further proximally for easy handling and manipulation and when your job is done remove this loop and bring out from the varus needle